This episode of BFC TV is brought to you by Polaroid. Welcome to BFC TV. My name is Ben, and today we are in Longview, Alberta, Canada. Why would we be in such a place? Well, we had to come out here to visit Flick Film. This is an incredible facility that distributes respooled film and is heavily involved in the production of chemistry throughout the world. We had to come out here after the popularity of our Electro 100 film that Flick Film distributed to us. This operation is quite remarkable and the owner, Dave, is gonna walk us through this facility. So without further ado, let's do it. Dave, how did this entire enterprise come to be? <laughs> <laughs> COVID. Essentially, I got so sick and tired of people talking about supply chain problems. I just said, forget that. We'll just start our own company and eliminate the supply chain problems. <laughs> so what have, what have we got in here? Uh, maybe walk me through the space and we can take a look at what you've got going on inside this building. This is our, this is labeling here. We okay. have three, three labeling machines. They kind of just go constantly. Uh, we're, creating labels for both uh, cassettes and for photochemical packages and mm -hmm. such. Uh, here's a little area that to put the felt on the cassettes. Yeah. Uh, all our cassettes are made in Canada. We had injection molds uh, made to yeah. to create our own cassettes. And uh, because we're in the midst of oil country here in yeah. Alberta, we have lots of uh, plastic available to us. So we don't have supply chain problems with our Well, main let's product. stop down for a second there. That's kind of a crazy thing you just said. So. Flick Film is creating their own film cassettes. Yes. And this is obviously something that the industry in a broader sense is having huge troubles with. The huge troubles which are not, in my opinion, are not fixable. The, the world is short of tin-free steel. Tin-free steel is what's required to, is very malleable steel. So you can create a cassette within a machine. And so the, you know, the photo industry is tiny compared to the canned food industry. I, I saw it was kind of creeping up and we just went a completely different direction and said, you know, we're not gonna fight this. We know that cassettes will yeah. never be available again to the likes of us, you know. As small as the film industry is to uh, tin food, we are to Kodak. <laughs> the fact that you figured out this like very essential item within your supply and doing it locally is pretty unbelievable. We brought as much home as we can so we don't we're not outsourcing you know I mean so many people are getting the film converted in Shanghai now. Yeah. And you look at that and go really you're going to ship film you know halfway across the world to a to a country where you know who knows who's doing your work who knows what the labor uh, uh, situation is for those people sure. doing the work you know and and uh, and then ship it back and deal with tariffs coming back in on and on and on. I just, it, it seems crazy to me. Okay, so right so, next to where film labels are being printed, what's going on here? This is our film conversion room. Everything that direction is top secret and cannot be shown. Yeah, everything back there that the camera can't see. No, nope, you can't see yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, no, no looking back there. Um, in that direction, we have four machines that uh, I've designed. We did the base design. We have an engineer that works uh, with me, a mechanical engineer. We, uh, the machines have a production capacity with a competent operator on them of between uh, 1,000 and 1,100 rolls per day per machine, and we have four of them. So we're somewhere between 4,000 and 4,500 rolls a day available there. That's using our plastic cassette. So each, each cassette is just hand assembled at the machine. Everything else is automated. The, all the spooling and whatever is yeah. automated. That comes off into a punch. We have a couple of punching lines, and these things are, are pneumatically operated. They have a little foot switch down here that'll make this thing go, and uh, it will punch the leader. But it also gives us an opportunity. Every single roll of film is looked at here briefly, <laughs> and we will look for uh, for any abrasions, you know, scratches mm -hmm. on the film, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. From here, they get capped, and that can be either in a capping machine here uh, or very, you know, various ways of capping. And that's it. On they're done. They're in a box and uh, and shipped. And it's it's that simple. So it may, I guess, shock people to see the scale of this operation is is 
so small to a degree, but you're pumping out so much stuff that people normally get from like much larger manufacturers. We also do third party work. And those companies are, you know, there's some, there's some large companies that we do, we do work for. They shall not be named. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's much like everything that's behind the camera. Yeah, right now. yeah, yeah. We yeah, don't yeah. talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but you can see our cassettes around the world. Basically, I think that analog film product production is a cottage industry. Mm -hmm. Is no longer a massive industry where you've got a factory of smoke belching out the chimneys, you know, and a train coming in one side with raw materials, mm -hmm. and a train going out the other side with acres and acres of. Uh, of product on it. We're, we're a little industry now. Uh, it's growing. It's growing fast. We, we've created a factory that we kind of run at about 150 percent efficiency mm -hmm. uh, rather than the big factories which are you know trying to run at five percent of their of their their, their efficiency and uh, we will have a higher success rate <laughs> doing what we do <laughs> that way. So this is the, uh, the second most important part of the building. This is the employees coffee uh, and, uh, and lunch uh, station. First employee and places behind me, which is the restroom, which yeah. we won't have to look at. So. We can take a look if you'd like. I mean, if you're doing anything interesting or different in the bathroom, I would love to see it. <laughs> yeah, these are just analog products. And uh, this room is just a just chock-a-block full of analog products that we've recognized that were not being uh, uh, serviced by the industry. And uh, we, we carry a wide variety of them and uh, yeah. much of it manufactured in, uh, in this area. Behind us here, we have just film. This is just finished film, and it's either in, in blue buckets. Street uh, Candy Mountain 100? We do roll Street Candy. We have a joint venture agreement with Street Candy to, uh, to uh, finish their film for them, and we just share in, the, share in the profits. Yeah, and the rest is just, this is just various films that we constantly rotate. And so th this venture started in earnest like three years ago-ish, maybe less. Yeah, a little less. Yeah, and and how did you, from the ground up, figure out the logistics of this? I mean, the, the, you. I feel like this is a very, it's small, but it's obviously you're able to meet your capacity demands. You're able to fill the industry with products that were vacant. Like, where do you even start, starting from scratch in 2020? I start work at four o'clock in the morning because, uh, you know, we have Asia and we have Europe. Uh, Europe is waking up, Asia is going to sleep. I have to talk to them both. And I will finish my working day at eight o'clock at night because that's Asia's morning and uh, we have to chat to them at that time. And that's basically how it was done. So of, you're just grinding. I basically just grunted it out. Uh, we got the whole day in between to, uh, you know, to work on, uh, yeah. on on new products and such. So, And being, being open and flexible, you got to be open. You know, and, and there are a lot of brilliant ideas out there uh, that uh, nobody knows how to kind of bring into circulation. And sure. we, we did quite a bit of that. So, yeah. 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 What is this? A, you have a film store connected here? Yeah, that's kind of where it all started. Uh, just uh, started off with this little camera store just as a lark, you know, thinking that the world needed more cameras available, more film available. I just ran it. I'd run it for six months, and I just shut it down for six months in the winter time and go off <laughs> shoot film down in the American Southwest. And uh, in order to get better pricing for my customers, I wanted to buy a little bit higher quantities, so I started buying uh, chemicals in larger quantities, and then distributing to other camera stores around. And it early COVID, so everybody started complaining about supply chain stuff, and uh, I thought, what the heck? I will just create my own wholesale business then. <laughs> I spent a lifetime in uh, developing real estate, working in construction. Uh, I did that because I didn't like supply chain problems. So we. I'm noticing a trend. Yeah. <laughs> so we just built our own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I find it uh, admirable and remarkable that you had this entire career and then decided to have the undertaking of doing something extremely hard and, and build another thing from scratch. I mean, where do you get the like energy? Is the motivation to do that like inherent in your personality? You know, where does that come from inside you? Some ex-girlfriends have told me it's a flaw. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's just yeah, it's just it's just me. You know, yeah. if, if I start doing something, it gets carried away. You know, I had an interest in vintage motorcycles, and uh, before I knew it, I had uh, arranged to close a close a road in British Columbia and actually race motorcycles up a mountain road. And that's a, an event that continues to this day. So, Unbelievable! You know, so nobody closes. You're like a road. folk hero, Dave. This is insane. <laughs> nobody closes roads in British Columbia, but this is our blending room. So this is where this is the heart of the photochemical 
factory really you know it's again it's like a it's a little cottage industry here so we have along this line just five mixers right now two more are actually on a plane tomorrow morning the demise of uh, Sino Promise our orders have kicked up enough that I we will now have three large blenders and four small blenders so you are creating the developers for film Yes. And how are you doing that? Are you doing that with raw chemicals with a recipe? Yes. We get pallets of uh, pallets of chemicals or barrels of chemicals here. And Was it uh, difficult to get raw chemistry at this scale? Or no? Is that is that not like hard to do? Some of the things you buy, yeah, you have to get vetted for. So right. I, yeah, I've been vetted. So apparently I'm not breaking bad right now. So. I don't know. It kind of seems like you might. <laughs> I, I kind of hope you do. Um. <laughs> no, that, well, some of the stuff we use actually can be used by terrorists. You know, but, sure. So we we um, color chemistry. We have black and white. We do paper developers. We can produce an amazing amount of stuff in this little space. Flick Film sells branded Flick Film, um, which might be confusing to some people. Um, like, what is the source of that film? There are three film companies in the world. There's Kodak, Ilford, and uh, Foma. And we source film from Kodak, Ilford, and Foma. We try to fill in the niches, I guess, that uh, aren't being met. So, you know, for example, the Vision 3 yeah. industry is very fractured. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry's rolling stuff. And yeah. then, we buy all our stuff just fresh out of Rochester for Vision, you mm -hmm. know, and we, we roll it, we finish it properly. You can see we punch a proper leader, you know, so it's not going to split on you. It's yeah. time to stern. We've got a high degree of consistency in what we do, and that's, that's what we can offer. You can buy cheaper Vision film than from us, but mm -hmm. I know that you can't buy better Vision film. <laughs> Like this is just flat out fun. I, I you know, I retired. I, don't, I didn't need to be doing this, but I don't think I could have much more fun than running Flick Film.